All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining another edition of our Free Training Friday webinar. Uh, today we're going to be discussing rules-based calendaring. So before we get started, uh, and again, this is Scott, senior trainer here at Abacus. I have my colleague Kaylee uh, on as well, who will be fielding questions at the end. Uh, before we get started, just by show of hands, can you please raise your hand if you can see my Abacus Law screen? Just let me know if you can see that. Click the little hand raise button. Perfect. Thank you, everyone, for doing that. And also, one more time, uh, please raise your hand, obviously, if you can hear me. Uh, it looks like some people already did that. They know how it works. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, again, we're going to be recording this, so you'll get a recording copy uh, sent over to you. And if we don't get to everybody's questions uh, at the end, don't worry. We're going to follow up with you via email. We log all of those questions, and we will follow up with you. Um, so, like I said, we're going to be talking about rules-based calendaring. And for anybody who's new to Abacus, or I know sometimes we get uh, attendees who aren't, don't even have Abacus yet, um, which is nice. That's always welcome. Um, basically, the idea behind rules-based calendaring is to uh, make the system calendar multiple events when you only have to calendar one. So if you think about, like, civil procedure rules, for those of you out there, uh, who end up having to calendar those manually. Uh, you know how daunting of a task that can be. Um, if the judge sets a trial date for six months uh, into the future, you know, you have, you know, 30 different things you have to do that need to get on the calendar leading up to that date. And then you also have things that you have to do after that date. So the whole object with rules-based calendaring is to kick off a rule that will calendar all of uh, those events for you. Um, it's very similar um, to some of the generic rules that come with your program, which is actually what we're going to look at today. Um, and the whole idea behind those, again, uh, is to limit the amount of events that you have to manually calendar. So if I take on a new case, uh, and let's say every time we take on a new divorce case, uh, we have five things that we always have to do within the first week. We have to run a conflict check. We have to draft a fee agreement. We have to send that client the fee agreement. The client has to sign it and send it back, right? So we don't want to have to calendar each individual event to remind us to do those things or to check on those things. The system can do it for us. So we're going to start inside of our calendar. And again, that's just a little button in your top left corner that says calendar for anybody who's uh, new to the program. This is going to take you into the daily organizer, but of course you do have a weekly view and a monthly view as well. Inside of this view is where you're going to see any appointment, any reminder, any task, things like that. Anything that's been calendared manually or anything that has been applied based off of a rule. If we want to calendar an event that is associated with a rule, we can right click anywhere on our calendar and you'll notice in that right click menu there is an option that says add events from a rule. This actually opens up your rules database. So for those of you out there who have specialty versions, um, for those of you out there who have purchased um, you know, local rules, federal rules, state rules, you're going to see those in this menu. Okay? You just need to look either by the rule name, which is kind of like an abbreviated code, um, or look at the rule description which is obviously a little bit more of a, a descriptive uh, a text there about what that rule is. But let's say we were looking at our new divorce case rule because what we wanted to do is we wanted to calendar the kickoff of a new divorce case that we started. I can select that rule from my list, click Done, and in my event window, notice how my what code for my event turned into a very specific code titled New Divorce Case. Okay? Everything else in this window you still need to fill out the same just like you do with normal events that you create. You need to assign the WHO code. You need to make sure that the date and time and length of time is accurate. It's always good to put in uh, some more notes here. Okay, And you always, always, always should link the event to the case, okay, to the matter itself, and even the name if you want to do that, okay? But this is the key thing that I want you to see. 
Because when you choose that rule code from your list, it actually puts that code in the what field of your new event window. And that's how Abacus realizes that you want to use a rule. It looks at that what code field and it says, is this what code applied to a rule? And if it is, then it asks you if you want to calendar that specific rule. So watch what happens when I fill out the rest of my case here, or my event, rather. What did I say? This was a divorce case, right? New divorce rule. So let's go ahead and kick this off here. Watch what happens when I click Save now that we have identified a rule to be used. I click Save, and I get this little pop-up window from Abacus that's telling me that I am scheduling an event that is associated with a rule. And it's asking me, do I want the related events scheduled? Well, nine times out of 10, the answer to this question is yes. That's the whole reason we chose that rule. That's the reason we chose that what code, okay? So I would say yes here. And what that's gonna do is open up this lovely little window that shows me every single event that is about to get calendared, okay? And if I move this over a little bit, you can see the actual descriptions. We've got our first meeting with our client, which took place today. That's the date that I calendared it on. That also happens to be the date that the system is using to base uh, the rest of the events on. So I've got my conflict check that's got to get ran. I've got my billing account that has to get opened. I've got my confirmation letter that I need to send within three days to my client. Notice the three-day interval there from the 13th to the 16th. On the 18th, I've got a request for client's financial documents. The 20th, the drafting of the fee contract. And the 27th, a meeting with my client probably to discuss that fee contract or to discuss the case. Okay. So this is an opportunity for you to look at every event that's about to get calendared and make any changes if you need to. So if anybody looking at this, there's probably one date here that really stands out, and we all know uh, in our world, Saturdays and Sundays are no-nos, right? We don't want to calendar something on a Saturday and Sunday because the court doesn't recognize it, so we probably don't recognize it. So we can change this. We can edit this. I just highlight that line, click edit down below in the bottom left, and I can change this date, okay, to maybe the day before. Usually it's going to be the day before. You could also do it for the day after if you want to, okay? It's going to ask me now if I want to update any related events. I could say yes here. I'm going to say no just because I see that the rest of them are on weekdays, okay? And now I've got all of my events strategically placed throughout the next two weeks. Okay, on specific dates. So the last thing I need to do is just click my little done button in the bottom right corner, and now I'm completed, okay? I select done. Not only do I have my calendar event here, notice how the system also calendared other items for me, okay? Up here, these are reminders of things I need to do today. If I go out here to the 27th, just click my little 27th day here, look at that reminder right there. I didn't have to go to the 27th and calendar that. The system did it for me. Okay, I have a new client meeting happening on that day. Okay, so it automatically does it for me. So that being said, you know, the next question that I usually get whenever I conduct training uh, with clients on, on this topic is how do I see the behind the scenes of my rule in case I want to tweak it or in case I want to add extra reminders? or if I just need to you know, adjust maybe the day interval or something like that. Here's an easy way to do it. You can actually close out of your calendar for this portion because all of your rules are listed underneath your setup menu under the file option, okay? So if you look right there where I have highlighted, you can always click File, Setup, Rules, and that will open up that same menu of all of those, you know, installed rules that you have, whether they're state, local, federal, or, you know, case-specific uh, type rules, case-type rules. So if I wanted to see the behind the scenes here and make some changes to this rule, I can just highlight the rule, click Edit, and that will open up 
all of my events within that rule, and I have the option to edit these individual events. Now, here's a pro tip for you. If you are looking at state, local, federal rules, don't edit those, okay? You don't, you just leave them the way they are. We get those from, uh, you know, the, uh, those said entities. Um, so if you happen to think that there is a uh, discrepancy, please let us know. You don't want to edit something, do it incorrectly, and, um, you know, end up missing a court date or something like that or a filing deadline. So leave those uh, the way they are. It's always a good idea. If you ever think that you're going to try and tweak a rule, notice my clone button up here, okay? I don't need to edit this exact rule. I can actually clone it, give it a new name, okay, like maybe Scott's new divorce case rule, and then edit the clone. That way, if you mess up, no harm, no foul, you still have the original right there in place, okay? So, because I happen to know that I uh, can do it correctly, I'm just going to go ahead and click that rule and click edit. And again, this brings me to my behind the scenes. Okay? So, a couple columns here that are important. Um, obviously, the uh, event number column tells you how many events are going to get scheduled in that rule. The description column tells you what that event is. Okay, first meeting the client, opening our billing account, uh, drafting the fee contract. The interval and the relative column are actually the two most important columns when you are creating or editing these events. Because the interval column and the relative column are what tell the program what day to, to calendar these events for. Okay, so you can see here on zero day, that's our meeting with our client. So if I kick out one day here, notice it says 1D, that means that one day after our very uh, first event, we are opening our file. So that's the day that the system is going to calendar it. 3D, that's our confirmation letter that's getting sent out. So that's going to get calendared three days after we meet with our client. How do we know that it's after our meeting with our client? Because of our relative column, okay? This is three days relative to zero, okay? So if I were to change this to maybe three days relative to the opening of the file, well, I can just highlight that line, click edit down below, and notice I have my interval field and my relative field. So I can say three days after event three, okay? So that means whatever day this event falls on, three days after it, this event is going to get calendared, okay, and so on and so forth. If we look at this again, we don't just have to do it by days, okay? We can highlight that, click edit, and we can change the interval type as well. Okay, so I can make it three weeks, three months, three years. It's completely up to me. Another thing I want you to notice, this is very handy, notice our move weekend date two buttons. So if you remember, when I calendared that new divorce case rule, one of my events fell on a Saturday, and I had to manually change that. Here is how you can have the system manually move it for you so you don't have to. I can just tell my program, if one of these events falls on a weekend, move it to the Friday before or move it to the Monday after, okay? And the system will automatically do that for me. Okay. So that's kind of the whole behind the scenes look at the rule. Again, you want to become familiar with the rules that you have installed in your program. And the best way to do that, of course, is by just going to File, Setup, Rules, finding the rule that you'd like to look deeper into, clicking Edit, and checking out and reading the descriptions and the intervals of what this rule entails. This is an interesting one. We've got, this is a rule that actually counts backwards, which you will see a lot in your civil procedure rules, your locals, uh, federal and superior rules, especially for like trials, because the date that we're actually kicking this rule off on happens to be the day that we are meeting with creditors. This is a bankruptcy 341 creditors meeting rule, 
Okay. So what I would do is I would schedule the meeting with the creditor, which would obviously be a future date, maybe a month from now. And then you can see that the system is from that date going to start counting backwards so that I can do some things leading up to that meeting. Like for instance, two days before the meeting, I'm meeting with my client to discuss the creditor's hearing. Okay. Reminding my uh, client what to bring. 21 days before that meeting, I'm sending a notice to all creditors, trustees, and interested parties. Ten days before, I'm requesting uh, information, it looks like, from the, the trustee. Okay, some sort of auditing information, it looks like. So your interval can go positive number or it can go negative number. Okay, it's up to you. You can do a negative number in that little interval field. Okay. So become familiar with what is going on inside of your rules. Um, the you know the more understanding you have with what's actually being done, uh, I think the better um, it will be for you when it comes time to tweak them, edit them, or just plain old use them on your calendar. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and open it up to questions. Um, again, everybody's muted, so I hope you're using the little question or chat box there. Um, and I'll turn it over to my colleague Kaylee, uh, who will read those off to me. Hi everyone, thanks again for joining us. The first question is, is there a way to run the rule events without the extra verbiage showing up in each event's description after the triple asterisk? Um, I, there's no way to really turn that off, like to show the event um, or to, you know, uh, show the description inside of the rule but not in the event. Um, so really what you would end up having to do is probably blank that note window out after you've calendared it, which I don't know if, if efficiency-wise, that's probably the best thing. Um, it's automatically going to put the description in based off of what is in the rule description here. So, I mean, whatever you have in there, it's, it's automatic. There isn't like a check, check box that will turn it off for you. Alrighty, this next question, uh, please excuse me if I butcher it. How do you add a reminder to one of the already set up what events? Okay, so this is, a, this is actually a pretty common um, question. And where this question stems from is what's the difference between these events, right? Because we have multiple sections in our calendar. So when I train people on the calendar, I always like to define the sections. First off, we have our appointments, okay? Like, for instance, uh, apparently I'm supposed to be in a client meeting with John Smith right now about John Adams uh, versus the British. I didn't know that. But if I open this up, the answer to your question lies in this field, okay? This little at field. If we put a time of day in that field, the system looks at that as an appointment, okay? An appointment at a certain time. If we blank that field out and we leave it with nothing in that field and we save it, it's no longer an appointment. It is now a reminder. Okay? See how it just shifted up to my reminder section? So if you wanted to just add a reminder manually to your calendar, that's fine. All you have to do is either just click the plus button on the reminder square, okay, and notice by default, it leaves that field blank. Or if this is an appointment that you're trying to edit, you just want to open up that appointment and blank out that field, and it will put it in your reminder section. Now, if you're trying to do this within the rule itself, then what you want to do is open up that rule, just uh, find whatever one it is. I'll do a new case again. That's a pretty easy one. Okay. And what you're looking for in the Step when you edit it is the event detail tab, and you're looking for the time. Okay, as long as this field is blank in the event detail tab, it will be calendared in your reminder section. If you put a time in here, it's going to show as an appointment on that time, or I should say at that time of day on that day. If you put in the words T-O, T-O-D-O, that means it is now a to-do, a.k.a. a task, and it will show in your 
to do section here. Okay, so I hope that answers your question. Alrighty, Cindy wants to know, can I attach a form to a specific event? Yes, Cindy, I like where your head's at. This program is, you know, really designed to make your daily activities more efficient, right? So one of the cool things you can do with these rules, and some of you might have seen it as I was uh, skimming through this. I'm going to go back to our, our rules menu. Okay, let's open up our new divorce case rule. Click edit. Here's our list of events. Let's say drafting of our fee contract. Maybe we have a very specific form that we always use for that fee contract. Well, I can highlight this event right here, click edit, and there is a forms option that I can click, and I can choose to add one of my abacus forms, that's in my forms library, or I can choose just a standalone Microsoft Word form that maybe I have on my computer or on my server somewhere. So you absolutely can add forms to your individual events within a rule. Great question. Lauren wants to know, how do you add a reminder to a rule so it shows up seven days prior to the date it's due, like a reminder? So the due date is obviously going to be have something to do with, um, okay, let's, let's try and put this into like a logical scenario. Let's say that we have a deposition. Okay, we have a deposition on Friday, next Friday, and we want to have a reminder on Monday that we need to prepare docs for depo. Okay, here's basically what we would do, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually, I think I have a depo rule in here. Let's see, I do. So here's personal injury deposition. Okay, I'm gonna click edit. Basically, what we're doing is we are calendaring the date of depo, and then if we want it to be seven days prior, here's our little, here's kind of a line that actually shows it. Um, let's see, here's the deposition date, okay? Seven days before that, we're preparing for depo. So all you would basically have is you would have your line item for your deposition date, and then you'd have another item, probably called prepare, and in that interval field, it would be negative, seven and the relative field would have whatever event number is the actual depot so in this scenario here it happens to be event number five so I would put five in this field so if I look at this what the system is going to do is it's going to say what day is event number five falling on and whatever day that is seven days prior I'm calendaring my prepare for depot event so hopefully that answers your question. Great. And while we wait for more questions to come in, I just wanted to um, announce another webinar for, for Abacus Law that's scheduled for next week. Next Monday, our Chief Solutions Architect, Tomas Soros, is going to be covering all the new features in Abacus Law version 23-24. So uh, be on the lookout for that. If you go to the abacusnext.com website, uh, go to our webinars page, you can register for that webinar and you can, we'll go over all the new features including the new mobile app and answer any questions that you may have uh, regarding that. And I see another question here. What is the secondary calculation screen for? So the person's talking about, let's uh, just pull that open real quick. If I click edit on one of these, notice this tab here that says secondary calculation. This is basically where we can do additional um, calculations for this one event. So in other words, I can do this twice, okay? I can say I'm gonna have one for 30 days out, and then I'm gonna have the exact same thing, um, again, redundant for 10 days out, okay? So it's basically just a way to update it again. Great. So Lauren asks, so how would you add a reminder to the trial rules? Do you create if off the relative event? Since you are creating a new event, which is a reminder? Mm -hmm. So it just depends on what you're wanting to be reminded about within that rule. So if you're thinking about like trial rules, 
um, you know, those probably have a lot of different events within them. So you want to find which one of those events you're wanting to be reminded about, okay? And then you want to click Add down here. Like, let's say, let's say we wanted to be reminded five days instead of seven days. We want to be reminded five days before this deposition. Now, in your scenario, it would be five days before trial, okay? All I would need to do is just click the Add button, bottom left corner, put in whatever my what code is going to be, probably reminder or something along those lines. Put in a little description, you know, remind, and you can edit this. This is up to you, what you type in here. I would probably just put in something, you know, very basic, um, you know, reminder or something along those lines. But the important thing at this point is your interval, okay, how many days prior to that, you know, uh, date do you want to be reminded so if I want to do it five days before my depot date, I just go down five, okay, negative five. Days is my interval option. And relative to would be that date that I'm looking to be reminded about. So I would say event five, okay? So the same thing would work in your trial rules. If you wanted to have an extra reminder in there three days before the trial date, then you can just click add. Put in reminder, say reminder of trial date, make your interval negative three or whatever it is, and your relative number would be whatever event is the, is the actual trial, whatever number that is, okay? And that will add it. So here's my reminder, okay? Five days prior to event number five, okay? It doesn't really, sometimes people will get confused about the order here, like because this reminder is really happening five days before this event, but it's all the way at the bottom. Don't worry about that. The only thing that matters is your interval and your relative column. As long as you have those accurate, the system is going to put them on the right dates. Okay, Daniel wants to know, can we create a new rule, or should we clone a rule and edit that? <laughs> well, that depends on how much work you want to do, Daniel. Um, if you do, if you just add a rule, that's fine. Um, but you're you're starting from scratch. Okay, there's no template, uh, there's no nothing. You're basically um, clicking add. You get this little pop up that tells you that all rules must have a valid what code assigned to them. We know that. We talked about that before. Okay. So we're going to put in the rule name, you know, Daniel's favorite rule, and then we just start adding the events from scratch, um, you know, just like we saw before. Now, my humble opinion is the less typing, the better. So if you can find a rule that's similar, you know, to what you're looking for, um, it's, it's nice to just be able to maybe clone that rule, give it a new name, and then make your modifications. Uh, to that rule. So, I mean, whatever is going to be less typing for you is what I recommend. All righty. We have time for one more question. Going back to that secondary calculation screen, Candy wants to know, can you use the secondary calculation screen instead so you don't have to add more rule lines? No. It's only internally for that particular rule. But I think I know where you're going with that, Candy. So let me, we have your email address from the registration. I'll follow up with you uh, separately on that, and I'll send you a little bit uh, more info on that, that uh, thought. All righty. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Don't forget to sign up for next Friday's Abacus Law Free Training Friday. We will be going over how to create a web intake form. And that was a topic that was proposed to us by one of you. So thank you so much for your proposal. If anybody wants to hear about a certain topic, feel free to email us at webinars at advocatesnext.com. And also next Monday, we will be doing a another 15 to 30 minute webinar about the newest version of Abacus Law. So don't forget to sign up for that on advocatesnext.com slash webinars. And thank you so much, Scott. Absolutely. Thanks for joining, everybody. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.